is here. So uh, Jen's going to give us an opening statement and then we can uh, do questions. Just a reminder, leave your mics muted and then use the raise your hand uh, feature to ask Jen questions and I will call on you. So coach, if you want to go ahead with your opening statement. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, we are really, really excited um, that it's finally match week and um, get to travel for our first uh, preseason tournament at Wake Forest uh, to take on Navy, Wake Forest, and Hofstra. Um, you know, the team has been working extremely hard and, um, you know, trying to get um, some lineups together, but I'm just excited to finally play somebody else. Okay, and then we can open it up for questions. So like I said, just use the raise your hand feature and I will call on you. Go ahead, Kevin Bradford. Hey coach, thanks for giving the time. Can can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, awesome. Uh, the uh, We talked about it a little when we first uh, met with you, but the, the returners that you kept, um, now that they've gone through the full off season, how much of an impact have they had and helped you and, and the team itself? Yeah, I mean, the group of returners that we have, um, you know, have been great. Um, they've been extremely just excited to, um, you know, get to work and, and learn our system. And um, they're, you know, tremendous people and um, students as well. So that's been great. Um, but they've been really instrumental in just um, kind of setting the tone and and like I said, great attitudes as far as um, wanting to learn and um, getting out there and getting better every single day. Okay, Eric Little, you can go ahead. So you've got captains in Haley, Lauren, and Sydney. Every team picks captains in a different way. Uh, what was the process like for this team? Is that something the peers did? Is that something the coaches did? A little bit of both? Um, yeah, it's something um, that we um, have done for a long time, and it's kind of this, um, it's a pretty in-depth um, sheet just about, um, you know, many different categories, whether that's, you know, hard work, um, communication skills, um, confidence, um, not complaining, you know, there's probably 20 questions, and um, the team actually goes through um, anonymous, anonymously and picks kind of the top three um, leaders in each of those categories. And then we, um, as coaches compile that. So, um, yeah, we take, it's not, it's definitely not a popularity contest or, um, you know, you don't have to have been, um, a captain before, but it's really, um, it's not what you say, it's what you do, um, that, you know, comes across, um, pretty strong, um, in this, um, you know, top three leaders categories that, that we put together. Hey, Michael Griffith, you can go ahead. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Coach. So um, can you just talk about the schedule a little bit? Obviously, the Big 12 is a tough volleyball conference, and um, you, you guys play a tough tough schedule, non-con, all that stuff. So, and, and for you as a West Coast native, will you be seeing any new places, any new arenas, anything like that? Um, just talk about the schedule and um, some challenges and what excites you about it. Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, first of all, um you know, being hired a little bit late in the scheduling game as far as preseason goes. Um, you know, typically we love to be able to host a tournament. Um, and in the future, that's what we will be looking to do of one of these first four weekends, but didn't quite come together um, this first year. And so we are on the road. Um, a little Willie Nelson uh, will be playing probably by that fourth weekend for sure. Um but, you know, we've got some kind of more local um, East Coast that's, you know, makes travel pretty easy. And then, um, you know, a trip um, further west to, to North Dakota. But we were just trying to find, you know, the best RPI teams that we could um, without maybe overscheduling, not really knowing what we were going to get in the transfer portal um, and things like that too early. But, um, yeah, I, th I think it's a, a decently tough schedule. And then, of course, um, you're exactly right. The Big 12 is a, a really good volleyball conference, and we will be seeing many places um, that we haven't been. Um, the longer I've been in this game, though, I'm like, oh, yeah, I think I was there as a player, but that was a really long time ago. Uh, but um, it'll it'll be fun um, to kind of get out of the normal, I guess, Pac-12 uh, comfort zone. But we do get to return um, to some of those places and have that familiar familiarity as well. Hey, we're going to go back to Kevin Redfern. 
Oh, so in your first year, uh, in terms of pageantry, it's kind of maxed out with the anniversary, um, cool new court. Uh, first of all, was the court your idea or was that in the works? And second of all, how much does that heighten everything this year? <laughs> um, it was my idea. Um, so, you know, when I um, was hired, uh, Ren Baker and I kind of made a deal um, that, you know, we would we would try and get this done because I think it, it's um, such a huge um not only advantage for our players, I think it really cuts down on on injury and just the wear and tear of their bodies. And then uh, for recruiting um, and being able to, you know, host tournaments and things like that, um, I think it's really important and just kind of sets the the tone that, um, you know, volleyball is being invested in um, here at West Virginia. So we love our new Terraflex um, court. It's been great so far. Um, and so just, you know, really excited about um, all the things, the 50 year reunion, um, you know, that's coming up, um, celebrating the 50 years of volleyball, um, a reunion will take place in November, hopefully, you know, we'll get a lot of those players back that I will get to meet, um, because I'm just not familiar um, with with them. And um, I think it'll be um, a great time to celebrate um, just what all those players have done in the past. And then just to follow up on that, for those who might be unfamiliar, the new court, that's a whole new surface then, correct? It's not just paint laid on top of the basketball court. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it rolls out, um, you know, I guess kind of similar to like what a wrestling mat would do, but it's, um, you know, pretty volleyball specific. Um, you know, a lot of the the top 50 programs have that now. Um, you know, it, it really is a game changer. But yeah, once a you know, basketball uh, season kind of starts, we'll have to, you know, take it up and put it down. Um, and so we won't be able to practice on it quite as much. But for right now, um, it, it's been just great to have that down every day for us. Okay, then back to Eric Little. At what point in the preseason workouts does the focus shift from just general fundamentals and the things that you want to do and you want to impart onto this program to schools like Navy and Wake Forest and Hofstra and uh, prepping for this weekend? Yeah, you know, I think we've tried to keep it um, pretty similar to what just a normal game week would be. So, you know, we've taken kind of those first uh, two weeks of preseason and, and really tried to focus on ourselves. Um, this week, you know, turn the page uh, Monday and start preparing a little bit more, um, you know, starting lineups and um, you know, that first match of the season is always tough. Um, you know, you're maybe looking at film from last year or whatever, but, you know, Navy has a ton of newcomers just as we do. So, um, you know, talking about just being able to make um, in match changes and, you know, how quickly can we do that and make adjustments. Um, so definitely just kind of focused on ourselves um, for the beginning. And, and then this week have treated it truly more like a, a normal game week. Okay, and then Michael Griffith. Thank you. So obviously, Coach, the job that you did at Washington State was was incredible, right? Bringing them to the national spotlight, eight consecutive NCAA tournament appearances. Um, can you just talk about the intrigue of the job here? And, you know, when you were hired, um, a lot of people were like, oh, wow, she's a top 25 coach. Like, this program is in a little bit of a rebuild era. Like, you know, what is it about the job here that really intrigued you? And um, when, when Rin Baker first approached you about it, what was your initial reaction? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it was a um, pretty crazy year with, uh, you know, the Pac-12 essentially dissolving and uh, Washington State kind of being left out in the cold and just not having answers. Um, you know, so for Burdett and I um, as coaches, you know, just really wanting to still stay in the Power Four um, and be able to compete at the highest level that we possibly could. So when, um, yeah, this West Virginia job came open and, and talked to Ren, um, to be honest, the, the, the first time, um, was probably thinking, I'm, I'm not sure West Virginia is a long ways from home. Um, but after talking to Ren, um, just realized what a great leader he is and, um, that he wants to invest in the sport of volleyball and see it grow. Uh, because it is just so popular, you know, throughout the country as well, um, that uh, that was really something in intriguing. And then when I made the trip um, here to Morgantown, um, once again, I am not a city girl. I am um, a, a college town girl, um, you know, grew up 
um, in a town with one blinking light. So Morgantown's actually pretty big for me. Um, and so just, it, it really is about the people and the support um, that West Virginia has for all of its um, sports teams and, and the university in general. Just, um, it felt really special and, and it does feel like coming home just on the East Coast. I just wanted to ask, like, this is just a side note. I cover the high schools locally here too. Have you had any chance to like connect with any of the local programs? Morgantown High School's defending state champions. That is anything like that recently? Yeah, I heard they have this new freshman, Leah Greeny, who's six two and she's yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have seen Morgantown High uh play. Um was able to watch. Yeah, they're off to a great start. Um, but yeah, the the sport of volleyball um is really taking off like I said, throughout the country, but, but here in West Virginia as well. So, um, and I'm happy. Um, I've told lots of, um, coaches throughout the state. We're happy to do anything for them to connect with them. Um, if they need anything, if they want to come to practice, um, we want to be very, very accessible, um, to volleyball players and coaches and fans throughout the state. And then back to Kevin, if you still had your hand raised there. Yeah. Thanks Liz. Uh, Coach, one of the more fascinating things we learned about you from your three guys episode was your relationship with Dick Bennett. Um, is how often are you guys still talking and how much is everything you learned from him? How is that applicable in the transfer portal era? Oh, man. Um, yeah, we, we don't get to talk to Coach Bennett um, near as much as we would like. You know, we, we are a little closer to Tony now, so we, we might need to take a, a trip down there. But um you know, just the the foundation that um, Dick Bennett just built um, wherever he was, um, I think is so important um, to have that in any program that you're building. Um, so, you know, we we were lucky enough to be able to, you know, take all that information with us. Um, but I, I still think it's relevant in the era of the transfer portal. I mean, um, you still have to have that foundation. You're, um, you know, we have the same five core values um, and we've never wavered from that. So every recruit um, from 2007 at Lewis Clark State through Washington State through every recruit that we've had here uh, um, at West Virginia has heard the same message. And, you know, so I think that's really important. And um, yeah, it still rings true in, in the transfer portal era. You just uh, you're trying to build that maybe a little quicker. Hey, Eric. I know the roster is maybe not as big as you'd like it to be, but at this point of the preseason, how comfortable are you with personnel groupings and rotations and getting who you want to see on the floor together, actually getting them out there together? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, we're we're kind of trying to wrap some people in, in bubble wrap a little bit. You know, um, preseason camp can be pretty tough on the body, but, um, you know, we are nursing a, a couple of um, – just injuries, but the, everybody's been great. And, um, you know, it's been nothing major. So um, that's wonderful, but just getting a lot of different people into the lineup. Uh, and I think that's going to um, probably be how it is kind of like uh, by committee um, and, and changing some people around. And I think that is something at least, at, you know, at Washington state early on that we did and moving people around, you're going to maybe see people in different positions um and so we we've just told every player to be ready um no matter what and, and they might be you know just trying to do whatever they can um for the good of the group to follow up real quickly on that uh with a smaller roster do you expect to kind of have an idea of uh of, of those rotations and 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 who you want together maybe earlier than usual in in past years or later than in past years oh man i just think having such a such a a, a new group and trying to get everybody to gel um you know like if you have a returning group of lots of starters you know you typically are able to to get your lineup together a little er bit earlier for us I think it's going to be um evolving throughout our first few weekends um and um so we'll just let's see from there I think everybody's doing a really good job competing and and different people have um, great practices and, and you have to be able to reward them and, and get them into the lineup at, at some point in time. Hey, does anyone else have any other questions for Coach Greeny? 
Alrighty, if that's all, uh, to wrap it up, I just wanted to let everybody know that at our home games, we're going to give Coach about a 15-minute grace period, and then we're going to host, like, pre-game, I mean, post-game interviews over in front of the Club 35 doors. Um, so if you have any interview requests for post-game, please just shoot me an email and let everyone know in your organization that that's kind of our plan right now. But I'm going to stop recording.